What is up YouTube? My name is Yardbra and my grass is green green. But it always hasn't been like this. Here's what it used to look like before. Yeah, pretty rough, right? Mole holes, crabgrass, weeds, patchiness, it was a rough ski. Now I know you're here because you also want a nice lawn and maybe you just don't know where to start. I'm here to share my lawn care journey and hopefully it can motivate you to do the same with your lawn. I just started this project April of this year, 2020. And so far the process has turned into a pretty big passion that has motivated me to share my experience with you on YouTube. The cool thing is I do have a smaller yard which I hope a lot of you can relate to. I've gone through trial and error, but again, I've gained a ton of knowledge from just experience. I will be showing you guys what I do to maintain a green and healthy lawn, show off some of my tools I've purchased along the way, new reviews of old tools, new tools, test out products with before and afters, etc, etc. I'm here to have fun and I hope you guys have fun with me as well. Now I do have a little 300 square foot patch that I'll be renovating to show you guys step by step of what I did in the front to turn this into this in less than six months. All right, let's get to it. Okay guys, first things first, little background info. I am in the Pacific Northwest and I do rock cool season grasses. So I do the Scott Seed, it's easy, go to your local hardware store, pick up the products so you can start ASAP. Now when is the best time to start doing this? When I started it was early spring. Early spring, late summer, like end of August, middle of September to fall, that's the best time to do it. So right now it's fall and I started this the 300 square foot patch on September 19th, 2020. These are the items you're going to need to get started. Number one, a lawnmower. Number two, a rake or de-thatcher machine. Number three, a rake or a golf course style leveler tool. Number four, a lawn roller. Not necessary, but good to use. Number five, some kind of aerator tool. Whether it be core aeration, we're going to use a budget aeration tool. Number six, some kind of pre-emergent. I use tenacity. Number seven, the seed you want to plant. I'm in the Pacific Northwest. I would either rock Scott Sun and Shade Mix. Right now we're going to rock Kentucky Bluegrass. Number eight, lawn soil. Whether that be from your local place or just the Scott's brand, soil, eight bucks a bag works flawlessly. Number nine, peat moss. Number 10, starter fertilizer. Number 11, a hose with a sprinkler head. And number 12, some kind of cold beverage because you will be sweating, you are kind of working out, and you, it, 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 you're going to be thirsty. Okay? All right. The first step you have to do is you have to mow your lawn super short so you can get down into breaking up that thatch with the dethatcher or rake. So you're gonna wanna bag everything so nothing stays on the ground. This backyard hasn't been touched for almost 11 years so the soil is super compact and we're just gonna have to get in that soil, lift it up, lift up all the dead grass, thatch, and moss. Next step is to rake everything or what I'm doing is running the dethatcher machine. I do have a Sunjo dethatcher. It did come with a bag. I'm not using the bag because to me it's a waste of time. It fills up super fast and you're just going to be constantly unloading that bag. So just run it without the bag and then we'll mow up the excess. dead grass in there. Next step, mow up all the excess nonsense and rake it up and mow it again. You want a clean slate, 
right before you lay everything down. So go ahead and start mowing up all that nastiness. Next step, aeration. We're using this budget aeration tool just to get some holes in the ground, have that water get in there, nutrients, all that good stuff. So aerate the entire area. I'm, I'm, this is this soil's been here for a while untouched, so I'm literally just poking a ton of holes into it. Again, the soil's gonna go over, but as long as there's some, you know, some holes in there, aeration, we're good to go. Next, I'm going to put the pre-emergent down. I do this when I seed, it is safe to do it. The grass will grow. Now, if you do have a lot more grass in this, it will kind of uh, burn the top layer of the grass, but that will go away after a couple of mows. So don't get too scared if you're, if you're new to tenacity. That's what this guy does. It turns your what, grass white, and then you freak out. You're like, oh my gosh, I killed everything. No, it's fine. After two mows, it's all gone, so you're good to go. But this pre emergence is great, so all the crabgrass doesn't come up, uh, the clovers, things like that. I've used it for the past two seasons and it's worked flawlessly. Now you don't have to do this step, but then you're gonna have to treat it after. It's always easier to do it before. Now we have to get soil. So I didn't have soil on deck. I don't have a lot of room here. So I had to go. I had my dad come with me. We went to the hardware store and got the bags of soil. If you have a truck that's even better, we use an SUV and it smelled really bad in there. This stuff that we had, man, very potent smelling manure-y. <laughs> it, uh, it was intense. So with the soil, I did about 10 bags. It's 300 square feet, a lot of uneven parts. So I had to you know, spread it out all evenly, get some good coverage of that soil. Now I'm using the golf leveler tool. Now you don't need this, but it is definitely going to make life easier for you. If you have a rake, you can just use the back side of the rake to level everything out. Next step, roller tool. Lawn roller is amazing. I purchased this after I did the renovation in the front. Now it's not necessary, but I've noticed this going the second time around using it. It was a ton better with that seed to soil contact. I love this tool. It's not that expensive. It's good to have. Again, you can rent one at the local hardware store. I've seen it there before for like $25 for the day. But this is definitely a good thing to have. Now it's time to lay down the seed. I'm using the Scott's brand Wiz Spreader. It is automatic. It is convenient, compact. I use this every time I'm putting down seed. Just follow the directions, it's super simple. Now I am in the Northwest Coastal Planting Zone. So for this 300 square foot area, I'll be adding one pound of seed. It is a 2,000 square foot bag. We are working with 300 square feet, so the calculation is about 0.9 pounds. So we're just gonna do one. Of course, you're probably gonna need to add more seed once you see the bare spots once it grows in. But for now, we'll just use this amount. If you need help, there are a ton of grass seed to square feet calculators online. You'll see there are some clumps that fell from the feeder and that's fine. We will be lightly raking it in before we use the lawn roller one last time. Once the seed's down, make sure you lawn roll. This is the best way to get that seed to soil contact easier for them to germinate. It's going to be very helpful for you. I did this the second time around in the front. The first time I did not do this. It took a little bit longer to grow, but again, lawn roller, very good tool to use. Now we bust out the starter fertilizer. Same thing, read the directions, follow how much you need to put down for the square footage you need. Also, it gives you settings on your Wiz spreader or different Scott's brand spreaders, which is nice because you don't have to guess you know, how, how it's gonna come out. So this one states this, we're gonna do it this way. Now comes the very messy part, peat moss. 
yes. This stuff is very messy. I use gloves. I should be using some sleeves or of some kind, but it is messy. It gets all over your body. You get itchy. Now I've seen those cool peat moss spreaders, but they're very expensive. And the one at my local hardware store is being rented out. So for this one, I couldn't get the peat moss spreader. I will get that in the future for the front. I do want to use that thing. It looks sweet. But for now, just handheld and we're gonna go to town. Now, the sprinkler heads that I use are these little $20 ones. Now, I set these up in the front as well. So I have four in the front running off of some splitters. And these aren't time jets. So again, I just started this April of 2020. As I grow, I'm gonna start going, you know, and buying more different things to test out. I do want to invest in the timers, the digital timers. That way, because, you know, Pretty soon we're gonna not be watering as much and at the same time I just don't want to keep on going out there and watering. I want it set at a certain time. Like here, the perfect time would be like four in the morning. That way it's watered, it gives it time to dry up a little bit in the sun when the sun comes up. So I need that timer. I definitely need that timer. But for now, this is fine. Just go out there and water it yourself. The sprinkler is gonna be a godsend and a lifesaver for you. Again, you're gonna run this about 10 minutes at a time, three times a day. I cannot emphasize how important that is. 10 minutes at a time, three times a day. So I will be out there nine o'clock in the morning, water. Two in the afternoon, water. Evening, water. That's what I'm doing when I'm putting new seed down and I've it's always germinated. It's it's never strayed me in the wrong direction. Three times is the best time. Once you see that germination happening, then you can pull back the water. You can go longer water times once a day. But that's, you know, with this Kentucky bluegrass, it's going to take a while for it to sprout up. How long we have to wait for the uh, seed to grow? Uh, we're looking at about 14 days to, for it to germinate and then we're going to see some sprouting and then, you know, we're not going to be able to mow for a long time, but we'll update everyone on when it starts growing out. Thank you.